Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dwayne. I got a video for that Kimball United States Army veteran and retired VA rating specialist. In today's video, I am going to break down how do you win your claim for tinnitus. Now, as a former VA raider trained by the Department of Veterans Affairs, it is my opinion that tinnitus is not only one of the easiest claims to win, it is one of the most easiest claims to lose. So again, in today's video, I'm going to break it down for you so you understand, so you'll be able to win your claim. Before we get into today's video, make sure you click the link in the description section below and get signed up for my upcoming educational webinar on the VA claims process on August 13th and 14th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, how do you win your claim for tinnitus? First, you have to sit down and think about when and how you were exposed to acoustic trauma, loud noises. Now, for many veterans, it's easy, but for some other veterans, it's a little bit harder to come up with that. So I'm gonna give you some examples. Let's say you served in the Navy on the flight deck. Obviously, if you wore one of those green jackets, red jackets, or white jackets, I think it's yellow, okay? You were exposed to acoustic trauma planes, jets, taking off, landing, okay? Now, let's just say you didn't work on the flight deck and you worked in supply or administration. I worked a claim one time for a Navy veteran where he stated he did not work on the flight deck, but their supply office was under the flight deck. And there was a lot of banging when the jet was take off or the jet would land, okay? Makes sense, all right? So another example, let's say you were in the Army and you were administrative assistant. And a lot of people may think, oh, that's low probability. It is, unless you're assigned to a combat arms unit. What is a combat arms unit? You're assigned to infantry, field artillery, armor, engineer, because every time those uh, combat arms units will go out on maneuver or do live fire, the administrative assistants went with them. If you were in a mechanized unit, okay, let's just say, Field artillery at 155 Hauser mechanized. That administrative pack assistant had a vehicle. They would have to go down to the motor pool every Tuesday morning and do PMCS on those vehicles. All right. If you were a mechanic, you work in a machine shop. Okay. Now you can get an idea of your MOS and when you were exposed to acoustic trauma. I'm going to give you another example. You're not even thinking about this one. Dental hygienist. They're working with those tools every day, cleaning soldiers' teeth. They're not, majority of the time, they're not wearing hearing protection. You being exposed to acoustic trauma, okay? So you have low, medium, and high levels of acoustic trauma, but nonetheless, you're being exposed to it. So that's how you have to sit down and you think about how you're exposed to it. Now, I'm going to go on to the next step, but remember how you were exposed, because that's gonna come up later in the process, okay? Now, you're ready to complete that VA Form 21-526EZ. If it's a new claim, or if you were previously denied for tinnitus, you have to complete a VA Form 20-09950. Oh, and as a sidebar, this is a nugget. The VA just updated the 0995 on May 31st, 2024, okay? So make sure you get whatever form you need from the VA's website, no other website, okay? Now, so either the 526EZ or the 0995. Now you got to come up with that personal statement. Now, you being exposed to acoustic trauma or the different ways, it may be a five-page statement. Should you submit a five-page statement? No, makes no sense. You want to keep your personal statement short, direct, and to the point. Prime example, I served in the United States Navy as a flight deck, as a flight deck operator. I'm, I, wasn't, I wasn't Navy, so I, excuse me because I don't know the different jobs on the flight deck. But let's just say flight deck operator. I served in the United States Navy as a flight deck operator. Please see my attached DD-214, which shows my rate, MOS, or whatever they 
call those job qualifications, okay? During that time, I was exposed to acoustic trauma of planes landing and taking off while I was conducting flight deck operations. Please schedule me for a CMP exam to obtain a medical opinion with rationale. Now, that's just an example. Short, direct, and to the point. You're telling them what your job classification was or your job was. You're giving them a brief, a brief description of how you were exposed to acoustic trauma. Do not overthink this process. And that's one of the things that gets veterans denied. They have a tendency to overthink it. I understand it, but it's a lot simpler than what you think. Okay. So once you put pen to paper, then you submit the claim. Okay. Now you have to sit back and you wait. They get that call to show up for the compensation pension exam, the CMP exam. Now, this is where it's important to remember why you were exposed and how you were exposed to acoustic trauma. You can put that on three by five card if you want, okay? Because guess what? When you get to that CMP exam, then that's where you're going to explain your whole five page scenario, okay? I wouldn't go and take five pages or sit there and just try to remember five pages of stuff, but you're gonna, your statement is gonna be a little bit longer than your personal statement that you put on the form, your claim form, okay? The personal statement on the 526EZ or the 0995 was just to get you to the CMP exam. Now, this is where you're gonna have to go into detail. Now, I'm gonna use my personal example, okay? So I get to my CMP exam, and the audiologist says, okay, when were you exposed to acoustic trauma? while serving in the United States Army. When did the ringing start? Uh, about after my first year in the military, okay? And then they say, well, when, uh, not when did you see it, but they were like, how were you exposed, okay? So I told them, every Tuesday morning, as a loyal enlisted soldier, you would have to go down to the motor pool every Tuesday morning and pull PMCS on your vehicles. We had two five-ton, uh, trucks and two 15k generators that we pulled behind those trucks. We had to fire all of them up. We had to check the belts. We had to check the oil, transmission fluid, the air pressure, all of that. So if the tires were low or below the correct air pressure, we had to hook hoses up, fire the trucks up, hook hoses up to the air tanks and fill them up. And that truck would uh, the engine would idle, then it would raise a little bit higher, get louder because it's building up that air pressure, okay? So we would do that every Tuesday morning. We had to go to the gun range and qualify multiple times throughout the year. We would have to go out and do field maneuvers. So when you're driving these trucks and stuff like that, you're not, you don't have hearing protection in the majority of the time. So that's how I was able to explain how, when, and why I was exposed to acoustic trauma okay i tried to keep it short direct to the point and very simple then the exam wasn't over the audiologist tried to throw a curveball and he says well, what have you been doing or what type of work have you been doing since service and i said i worked in manufacturing and he was like oh you were around a lot of noises calm yourself i was a manager so i worked in the office and he just kind of like leaned back in his seat, very dejected. And I'm like, okay, was he trying to find another reason to deny my claim? Okay. So one, when you go to CMP exam, be honest, but make sure you're able to reasonably articulate your symptomology as it pertains to you being exposed to acoustic trauma and when you were exposed to acoustic trauma. That is very important. And I believe, I strongly believe, and I can't guarantee this, but I strongly believe if you do that, your chances of success of winning that claim for tinnitus go up. So with that being said, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button. And as always, make sure you share this video with your fellow veterans. Thank you.